Good afternoon. I am Arnel M. Godia, your discussant for today. And I will be reporting topic about communication under the course Human Behavior and Educational Organization. Communication is a requirement for survival and growth not only of people, but also of organizations. Modern organizations consider communication as an important factor in motivating their employees to improve productivity and to meet competition. But what is the definition of communication? When we say communication, it is defined as the transfer of information, including feelings and ideas from one person to another. The goal of communication is to have the receiver understand the message as it was intended. And what is the importance of communication? It is through communication that the organization can relate with its external environment, which include customers, suppliers, competitors, and the government. An effective communication system provides management with answers to questions related to what motivates its workers to perform effectively, what products or services the customers want, what products or services the suppliers are providing, and many others. Individual members of the organization will know important concerns if we have communication, such as what their organization is, what objective or objectives their organization wants to achieve, what their roles are in achieving the organization's objectives, how they will achieve those objectives, and who the individual members of the organization are. These factors will be very easy to understand if we have good communication. So let's talk about the communication process. Communication is a two-way process in which a sender reaches a, re a receiver with a message. To make communication effective, there is a need for people in organization to have knowledge of the communication process. So let us understand the different components of an effective communication. The first component is the communication source or yung tinatawag nating sender. It is a person who makes the attempt to send a message which could be spoken, written in sign language or nonverbal to another person or a group of persons. The degree of attention the message will receive will depend on the perceived authority and experience of a sender. The second component is what we call the message. It is a purpose or an idea to be conveyed in a communication event. The message is the actual physical product because of encoding. So let's talk about the message. How the message is received is influenced by the following factors. First, clarity of the message. Second, alertness of the receiver. It is very important that the receiver is on focus. Complexity and length of the message. It doesn't necessarily important how lengthy or how short the message would be. What, what, is the, what is important is that it is concise and easy to understand. How the information is organized is also another factor of a good message. The message has two components. First, the thought or conceptual component of the message. When we say thought or conceptual component of the message, we are talking about what is the content or what is the idea behind the message. The second is the feeling or emotional component of the message. This component of the message refers to how we deliver or how we connect to the person we are talking to. The next component of an effective communication is the channel. It is the medium through which the message travels. It consists of various types, which are as follow. 
It's either face-to-face, -face, telephone, and cell phones, via email, or by written memos and letters, or posted notices and bulletins. So these are the different channels that we may use to, co to deliver our message. The next component of an effective communication is the receiver. It is the person receiving a message. He must be able to interpret and understand the message. The last component of an effective communication is the feedback. It refers to the process of communicating how one feels about something or another person has done or said. Feedback provides a clue to the sender of information whether the message is sent was received as intended. And lastly, the environment. It refers to the circumstances in which messages are transmitted and received. Sometimes, communication becomes very hard to understand or there is a problem in the communication. There is a distraction in the communication. One reason of being distracted is because of the noise. Noise refers to anything that disrupts communication, including the attitude and the emotions of the receiver. So meaning to say, if the receiver doesn't want to listen or doesn't have the interest to listen, communication fails. It also includes loud music, the feeling about sick relative, children playing in the background, and many others. These are some of the examples that may disrupt the communication, which will lead to misunderstanding. The basic methods of interpersonal communication are, first, the verbal communication. It is a major means of sending messages. The delivery of verbal communication is quick and it provides opportunity for a quick feedback. A major disadvantage is that verbal is the distortion of the message when it passes to several people. We already know that. We have been in a different team building activities and one of the most activities that we are using is pass the message. And we saw there the problem when one message passed through the other people without understanding better the, the content of the message. Second is written communication. It includes memos, notice boards, and letters to staff, emails, faxes, internal newspapers, and instant messaging. Another method of interpersonal communication is the nonverbal communication. Communication that takes place through facial expressions, body movements, eye contact, and other physical gesture is referred to as nonverbal communication. So this type of communication reveals what the sender really means or thinking. Diba? Sometimes we just simply wave our hand and the other person already know what we are trying to convey or what message we would want to send to that person. Right? Next. Let's talk about the functions of communication. Why do we need to have communication? First function is what we call information function. It provides information needed in decision making. The second one is motivation function. It means used to encourage commitment to organizational objectives. The third is to, con is to control. It clarifies duties, authority, and responsibilities, thereby permitting control. And the last one is the emotive function. It permits the expression of feelings and the satisfaction of social needs. So these are the four functions of communication. Now, how one or how do we get or reach the effective communication? Basic goals of effective communication include to gain goodwill. Okay? Second is to inquire. Third is to inform. And lastly, to persuade. So these are the goals of effective 
communication. If we were able to deliver the message well, we receive the message with full understanding, then we will be able to get these four basic goals. Then, let's talk about barriers to communication. First is filtering. Filtering refers to the manipulation of information so that it will be seen more favorably by the receiver. The second one is selective perception. Selective perception refers to receivers selectively see and hear messages based on their needs, motivations, experience, background, and other personal characteristics. The third one is information overload. It is a condition in which information inflow exceeds an individual's processing capacity. The next barrier is emotions. When receivers' feelings affect his ability to understand any message sent to him, it hinders the communication. Next is language. Words do not always mean the same thing to different people, which pose a barrier. Next is communication apprehension. What is communication apprehension? It refers to undue tension and anxiety about oral communication, written communication, or both. Okay? The next one is absence of feedback. As what I've said earlier, one of the components of communication is a feedback. So without feedback, the sender will not know if the message was received at all. And it does not provide the sender the opportunity to correct misimpressions or misunderstandings about the message sent. The next one is physical separation. It refers to interferences to effective communication occurring in the environment where the communication is undertaken. Physical barriers include the following. Distance between people, walls, um, an office that is not conducive to communication, and an intimidating person posted near the door, or wrong timing. These are all examples of physical separation. The last one is lack of credibility of the sender. If the sender has low credibility, the message, even if it gets through, will likely be ignored because that person is, has no credibility or not credible at all. So the message will not be important to the person receiving the message. Now, it is important to know the kinds of communication flow. Various techniques used in, the, um, in communication helps us understand its flows. The first kind is what we call downward communication. Messages flows from higher levels to lower levels. So the purpose are to give instruction, to provide information about policies and procedures to give feedback about performances and to indoctrinate or motivate. Usually, this kind of communication happens from the authority to the subordinates, from the boss to the employer, right? The second kind of communication flow is the upward communication flow. Techniques used here are performance reports, suggestion system, informal gripe, gripe sessions, open door policy, and exit interviews. So this kind of communication messages from person in lower level positions to persons in higher position. Its purposes are to provide feedback to higher apps to inform higher apps of progress towards goals to relay current problems. Okay, so this is the other way around of the downward communication. The third one is horizontal communication. Messages sent to individuals or groups from another or the same organization level or position. Its purposes are to coordinate activities between departments to persuade others at the same level of organization and to pass an information, pass on information about activities or feelings. 
The techniques used usually in this kind of communication are memos, telephones or cell phones, picnics and dinners, and other social affairs. It is said that communication becomes ineffective when the affected people involved in it negatively or someone avoid un unwanted effects. The following tips could be useful. So, message should be improved. Okay, important yon. Kailangan, we have to study if there is a problem with the message. Okay, or the thought of the message. Okay, are the feelings and emotions to be used in delivering the message is okay as well. Skills in receiving messages must also be improved. Okay, sometimes you are not the one giving message, but we are the ones receiving the message. Are our skills good enough for us to receive good messages? Alright? So, to end my report, I would like to end with this quotation that communication is an essential element of, our, of organizations. Without communication, organization cannot exist. Because one cannot deliver a good message and somehow one cannot understand or cannot receive well good message. So with that, I'd like to end my report and I'd like to show you my references of communication under human behavior in educational organization. Once again, thank you so much for listening.